NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, millions across the U.S. are bracing for extreme cold temperatures this weekend. And it's not just the Midwest and Northeast. Plus, health officials are monitoring two people for cases of the measles in Portage County. And new information on a whitewater man accused of cutting the throats of two preteen girls. Hello and good morning. I'm Christine Belport. And I'm Ashley Matthews. Frigid temperatures are on their way and they'll be sticking around for quite some time, making it the coldest weekend we've seen in yeah. a while. Yeah, to let us know how cold, let's head over to meteorologist Brian Dukes. Hey, Brian. Hey guys, yeah, just in time for Valentine's Day, we're talking some of the coldest air of the season. Right now, though, we actually have some flurries around the area, kind of adding to that wintry feel, and I think that'll be the case through the afternoon. Most of those flurries now south and east of the Madison area, around Milwaukee and down towards Chicago, but still, we will keep that in the forecast as we head through the day today. 14 degrees here in Madison, it's 16 in Janesville, the same in Lone Rock and Mineral Point and Baraboo right now, coming in at 12 degrees. The winds, well, they are now out of the south and west so we are trying to bring some warmer air in and that should get temperatures into the 20s as we head into the afternoon but as I mentioned the coldest air will be arriving as we head into the weekend we'll talk more about that in your full forecast that's in a few minutes guys thanks Brian making news now around the nation millions of people all across the Northeast are preparing for some of the coldest temperatures in two decades the dangerously bitter conditions are expected to come on the back of yet another winter storm bringing of course more snow ice and high winds to an area that doesn't need it the Northeast starting tomorrow experts say the cold will start to creep in this morning and the mercury is expected to plummet until Monday the wind chill forecast is between negative 15 and negative 30 degrees. We have all dealt with that here and we know how awful that can be. And now a new warning about roofs collapsing under the heavy snow. Millions of Americans have been slammed with several feet of snow with more on the way again as we just said this weekend. So how do you keep the ceiling from falling in? Here is NBC's Jeff Rawson. Total devastation caught on camera from gas stations to office buildings to stores with people inside. Just crunch, 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 and then it all just fell right down. Heavy snow taking down roof after roof after roof. When all of a sudden we heard this ba-boom, and uh, we looked up and the whole side of the building had collapsed. Here in New England, they've already been hit so hard, and now there is this urgent rush right now to clear the snow off roofs before they're hit again this weekend. They drive around the neighborhoods, you see a lot of this. Take a look. Crews up on these rooftops of homes trying to clear the snow away to beat this next storm deep into the night, all hours of the night. The danger is real, and here's why. One cubic foot of snow weighs about seven pounds when it's dry and powdery, 20 pounds when it's wet. So two feet of snow across a flat roof can easily be 150,000 pounds. In this part of the roof alone, that's like three grand pianos crashing into your home. Pitched roofs aren't safe either. Two feet of snow up there is like nine heavy-duty pickup trucks. You're an expert. You do this for a living. How many calls have you gotten? Well over 500 calls. You can't hit all those homes before the storm hits. So if I'm at home right now and I can't get my local roofer, do I climb out my window, get on my roof myself and do it? Absolutely not. Please don't do that. Why? It's completely unsafe. What you don't understand is under the snow is a sheet of ice. You could absolutely fall, slip right off the roof, kill yourself even. Just look at all these videos on YouTube. Homeowners sent tumbling off their roofs in an avalanche of snow while doing it the wrong way. If you absolutely need to do it yourself and you have a ladder, obviously you need that. It's a two-person job. Somebody needs to be on the bottom anchoring it. There's, the ground is just like the roof. It's a sheet of ice, so you'd hold it. And I need one of these. It's a, a snow rake. It's a snow rake. Not everybody has one of those. You could use a shovel, a rake, or anything you and want. Just pull it off. So you push it away from you. Always push it away. Yes. There you go. And stay on the ladder, never get on the roof. Please don't get on the roof, it's very unsafe. Still, experts say the risk of leaving the snow is huge. And that was Jeff Rawson reporting. New at 11, a whitewater man has been convicted on all 12 counts for an attack that left two young girls with life-threatening injuries. Late last night, 42-year-old Larry Shannon was convicted of attempted first-degree intentional homicide, false imprisonment, and sexual assault of a child, among other counts. 
Prosecutors say Shannon cut the throats of the girls ages 12 and 10 and left them tied to chairs after he sexually assaulted the older child in October of 2012. He was also accused of choking his now ex-wife and tying her to a chair. Then he left police on a chase with speeds reaching 100 miles per hour that ended in Beloit. A 21-year-old woman is expected to be charged today following a fatal shooting in Nesita. The Juneau County Sheriff's Office responded to the shooting shortly before 1 a.m. yesterday. The 24-year-old man was killed and the woman was taken into custody. The names of both the victim and the suspect have not been released. Happening today, an investigation is underway into two possible cases of measles in Wisconsin. Portage County is investigating. Now the ages of the patients are not being released and they are in isolation. Testing is underway at the State Laboratory of Hygiene. This disease is highly contagious and spreads easily through the air from coughing and sneezing. Also today, even in these cold temps, members of the Menominee Indian tribe will begin a march to Madison for their proposed casino in Kenosha. They're requesting a face-to-face -face meeting with Governor Walker. The governor rejected the proposal last month. A send-off rally will be held today 155 miles north of Madison. And Governor Walker's administration has suspended merit raises and retention pay increases to help deal with our $283 million budget gap. The governor reportedly sent a memo to state agency human resource directors announcing the freeze last week. University of Wisconsin faculty, academic staff and appointees will not be affected, but a UW system spokesperson says the freeze will apply to classified employees, including custodians, administrative assistants, information technology workers, accountants, and food service workers. In our continuing coverage, the U.S. Army has approved hormone therapy treatment for Chelsea Manning, the former intelligence analyst serving a 35-year sentence for sending classified documents to the WikiLeaks website. NBC's Jim Miklaszewski reports. When sentenced to 35 years in prison for leaking thousands of secret documents to WikiLeaks, he was private first class Bradley Manning. The very next morning, in a statement read by Savannah here on Today, Manning to dropped a bombshell. I want everyone to know the real me. I am Chelsea Manning. I am a female. Manning's lawyer, David Coombs, revealed Chelsea wanted to begin hormone therapy immediately. I think the ultimate goal is to be comfortable in her skin and to be the person that she's never had an opportunity to be. But for a year and a half, Army officials at Fort Leavenworth Prison denied Chelsea the hormone therapy needed to transition to a woman. She sued the federal government, and just last week, the commander at Leavenworth approved the treatment. As an Army private in Iraq, Manning passed 700,000 U.S. secrets to WikiLeaks, including gun camera video of a U.S. helicopter attack in Baghdad that killed innocent civilians. But even then, Manning had a secret of his own. Seen here on leave in a woman's wig and lipstick, Manning was dealing with gender identity disorder. Manning could be pardoned from Leavenworth in six years. Her hormone therapy could begin any day. And that was Jim Miklaszewski reporting. Many moviegoers packed a few area theaters last night for the premiere of Fifty Shades of Grey. While some came to watch, others came to protest. Religious and other groups say the movie is degrading to women and endorses sexual violence. Protesters stood outside of some Madison theaters hoping to get that message across to fans. I think we should be empowering women. Um, I think women, are, again, are not, are not organizing like they were in the 70s in terms of, um, you know, speaking out for themselves and, and standing up for themselves. Fifty Shades of Grey hits theaters worldwide today.